Welcome to the second lecture on measurement uncertainty. The first measurement uncertainty lecture was a little bit long. This one's going to be shorter. In this lecture, what we're going to do is talk about how to propagate uncertainty through calculations. So in the first uncertainty lecture, we learned how to quantify the degree of uncertainty for single sample and multiple sample experiments. Now that we have those uncertainties, in this lecture, we'll take a look at how we propagate that uncertainty in a calculation. So let's go ahead and get into the material. If you look at your screen, you'll see a track of a hurricane. Actually, this is a prediction of where this hurricane is going to be after some period of time. And you'll see that there's this big blue region here. You've probably seen these sorts of predicted tracks uh, if you look at the Weather Channel or something like that. And it's this blue region is just a measure of uncertainty. It's a question of, you know, we don't know exactly where the hurricane's going to be. We don't, our models can't predict the weather with that degree of certainty that far in, uh, in the future. So we have some uncertainty associated with it. And the way they do this uncertainty, as far as I understand, is they actually have several different models that they use to predict what the weather is going to be in the future. And then they uh, run all those models and develop probabilities based on that. For example, if, if nine of the 10 models that they run predict it's going to rain, then there's a high likelihood, there's a 90% chance it's going to rain. If only one of the 10 models predict rain, it's a 10% chance. So they develop these uncertainties from these models to predict where the hurricane's gonna be. And obviously we wanna minimize that uncertainty because uh, if you're not really sure where the hurricane's gonna be, then you may be um, having people prepare unnecessarily for uh, you know, the hurricane arriving there. So you know people have to board up their homes and drive away and things like that. And you don't want to have to do that unless it's absolutely necessary. Plus, you want to be able to prepare the regions that are going to be hit by the hurricane appropriately. So you want to be able to focus your resources in the right place. So having a good understanding of the uncertainty in your models is very important, especially in this application. All right, well, let's get into the material. Uh, the way we're going to do this is uh, let's say we have some functional relationship. R stands for a result. We have a result that's a function of a bunch of other variables. So R is our dependent variable. X1 through Xn are our independent variables. Okay, so to give you an example of this, let's say that we wanted to measure the uncertainty of the volume in a, uh, in a can, can of soda or something like that, right? And we know our can here, our cylinder is height H, and it has a diameter D. And I want to calculate the, the volume of that cylinder. We know that the volume is going to be the base area, pi over 4D squared times the height. So my question is, ultimately what we're going to do in this, this uh, lecture is, if I have some uncertainty in the diameter and some uncertainty in the height, what uncertainty then do I have in the volume? Okay, so that's what we're looking for here. And this expression is just general. It's kind of like saying that the volume over here is a function of the diameter and the height, right? So in this case, R would be my volume, and X1 would be the diameter, and then the other X would be the height. Okay, so we're going to just start general, and then I'll, I'll give you uh, the can example as we go along. All right, so what I want to do next is say, okay, we're going to have some uncertainty in the result due to the uncertainty in measurement Xn. So, you know, we have some independent parameter here that has some uncertainty associated with it. We'll call that delta Xn. That's the uncertainty associated with that particular parameter. And then delta R sub Xn is the uncertainty in the result due to that uncertainty in Xn. So, what that means is we have our result here, and there's some variation in, in Xn here because of that, that uncertainty or some variation in that parameter. And then we're going to subtract out the result without it. So this is just the, the change in R due to that change in Xn. And then if I divide through and multiply through by delta Xn in both, so this is perfect. Going from, going from here to here, all I'm doing is dividing and multiplying by delta Xn in both. So there, there's no real variation there. But if you look at this for a moment, this expression in square brackets, if I take the limit of that as delta Xn becomes very small, 
then it becomes a derivative, okay? And that's what this is down here. So we have our delta r sub xn. So this is the variation in r due to the variation in xn. This expression in square brackets is like a partial derivative of r with respect to xn. And then, of course, we have our delta xn right there. I put the approximate sign there simply because um, it's only true in the limit as delta xn goes to 0. But we're just making an approximation here. We're just still saying that the uncertainty is relatively small. OK. And uh, just to go back to our can example, what this means is like the uncertainty or the variation in the volume due to the uncertainty in the diameter would be like the partial derivative of the volume with respect to the diameter times the variation in the diameter, which would be if I take the derivative up here. So I'm, I'm going back up into here and taking the partial derivative. That would be pi over 2 d times h times delta d. And then I can do the same thing for the variation in the volume due to the variation in the height. And that would be pi over 4 d squared times delta h. So that's what that expression is. Just the variation in our results due to the variation in some of one of the independent parameters. So this is what it looks like for our volume example. Okay, so hopefully you're with me so far. So to express the total variation in R or total uncertainty in R because there's some variation in, in or uncertainty in our individual parameters, what we'll do is we'll take the sum, the square root of the sum of the squares. So what that means is we take the square root of each of those vari the variation due to each of those parameters. We just add them all together. We, we square them and add them together. The reason we square them is because we want to we don't want them to subtract one another out. It's the uncertainty adds all of the uncertainties add together. So what that would look like for our particular example is the following. We'd have the variation in the volume, the total variation in the volume or the uncertainty in the volume would be the square root of the uncertainty in the volume due to the uncertainty in d squared plus the uncertainty in the volume due to the uncertainty in h squared, which we just found moments ago back up here. We know what those look like. This would be pi over 2 dh times delta d, that whole thing squared, plus pi over 4 d squared times delta h, that whole thing squared. So we can see then that if we have on some, some uncertainty in the diameter and some uncertainty in the height for our can, we could then figure out the uncertainty in our volume. So this is how we do this approach for propagating uncertainty. OK, uh, one important thing I want to just point out right here is that uncertainties add together. They don't subtract out. So if you have some uncertainty in the diameter and some uncertainty in the height, um, those uncertainties add together. Don't, don't think that somehow this uncertainty might subtract out with that uncertainty. The uncertainties add. So the more uncertainty you have in your parameters, it, it just grows and grows and grows because they always add together. OK. Um, there's another way we can express uncertainties. So th this, this expression that, I've, that I'm going to highlight right here, this is in terms of what we call absolute uncertainty. So let me just make a note of that here. Delta R is defined as the absolute uncertainty. So for example, if we have, and the uncertainty in our can is, um, uh, let's say, Let's say the diameter of the can is, uh, I don't know, 4 centimeters plus or minus 0.1 centimeters. The 0.1 centimeter is what we call an absolute uncertainty. So the delta R and the delta Xn's, those are all absolute uncertainties. Okay. Now we can also have relative uncertainties. What a relative uncertainty is, is the absolute uncertainty divided by the result itself. So it's given right down here. So this is the relative uncertainty in R due to the 
uncertainty in Xn. So it's the absolute uncertainty in R divided by R itself. So that's what that looks like. Okay, so just to, again to go back to our example here, if you want the relative uncertainty in the volume due to the uncertainty in the diameter, that'll be the uncertainty in the volume due to the uncertainty in the diameter divided by the volume, which would be one over the volume. We already did our derivative up at the top of the screen there. So let me just copy it down. Well, I'll, I'll just rewrite it. So we can substitute in. Now the volume is pi over 4 d squared times h. The derivative we did previously, that's pi over 2 d times h. And then here's our absolute uncertainty in the diameter. Now if you look at this for a moment, you'll see the pi's cancel out. There's a d that cancel out that cancels out, there's an H that cancels out, and then there's a four and a two. So if I rearrange that, that becomes two over delta D over D, which is just two over the relative, or two times the relative uncertainty in D. So let me highlight it. The delta D over D is just the relative uncertainty in D, okay? So the relative uncertainty in the volume due to the uncertainty in the diameter is two times the relative uncertainty in the diameter. And we can do the same thing for the relative uncertainty in the volume due to the uncertainty in the height. I'll just write the whole thing out. Hopefully you're getting the idea here. Okay, so you'll see in this one, the pi over 4 d squared, that all cancels out. And what we're left with ultimately is just delta h over h, which is just the relative uncertainty in the height. And then the relative uncertainties just to add together, just like what we did with the absolute uncertainties. So the relative uncertainty in the volume, which again is just the absolute uncertainty in the volume divided by the volume itself, it's given in terms of a percentage. So if I say that um, the volume has a 10% uncertainty to it, it means that whatever the volume is, you take 10% of it, and that's the absolute uncertainty. Okay, so this will just be the square root of the relative uncertainty in the volume due to the uncertainty in D squared, plus the relative uncertainty in the volume due to uncertainty in H squared, which in our case comes out to be 2 times the relative uncertainty in the diameter, that whole thing squared, plus the relative uncertainty in the height squared, which comes out to be four times the relative uncertainty in the diameter squared plus the relative uncertainty in the height squared. So that's what we get for our particular example. So this is how we propagate uncertainty. So if we have some uncertainty in our parameters like our diameter and height, we can propagate it through to find the uncertainty in our volume. And it's just this kind of a partial derivative approach where you take partial derivatives and then you sum the squares and take the square root to get the total uncertainty. Now one um, thing that I want to highlight here is if we take a look at this final expression here, or if we wanted to, we could take a look at it. Uh, it's a little harder to see up in here. It's a little tougher. So let me just focus down here. Um, if I was going to design my experiment, and I, you know, I have to make a measurement of the diameter and I have to make a measurement of the height, from an uncertainty perspective, I'd be much better off focusing my efforts on trying to improve my diameter measurement, trying to reduce that uncertainty. Because when you look at this relation, whatever the relative uncertainty is in the diameter, it gets magnified by a factor of four compared to the relative uncertainty in the height. So if I really want to decrease my overall volume uncertainty, I should really try to improve or reduce the uncertainty in my diameter measurement. That's where I should be focusing my efforts. Okay, so knowing something about uh, uncertainty and how it propagates through your calculations can help you design your experiment a little better. Uh, you can focus your efforts on improving the parts that have the most impact. All right.
That's really all there is to propagating uncertainty. Okay. So let me just summarize with a few notes here. Um, first of all, when calculating um, relative uncertainties and such, uh, or even absolute uncertainties, you need to use absolute pressure and absolute temperatures. So make a note of that, that, that you really need to be using absolute pressure, absolute temperature when you're doing these uncertainty calculations. The second thing is uncertainty in some quantities may be so small that compared to the other uncertainties that they can be neglected. So for example, if I go back up to here, if the relative uncertainty in the height is very, very small compared to the relative uncertainty in the diameter, I could just neglect it. Now where that comes into play most frequently is when you have constants. Like uh, if you were dealing with the ideal gas law, there's the gas constant. Presumably, we know that gas constant very accurately, right? People have made measurements of that for many, many years, and they've got a very precise value, um, very accurate value for it. So the uncertainty is small, so we can just neglect that uncertainty because it's, it's just so small compared to everything else. We don't have to worry about it. So that's note number two. Note number three. Uncertainty analysis can be used in experimental design to indicate where design improvements should be made. So that goes back to this idea here that if I'm going to try and improve my experiment, meaning reduce the uncertainty uh, in the overall volume measurement, where I need to be focusing my efforts is really the relative uncertainty in the diameter since that contributes the most. Okay. There's actually a fourth item I should put in here. I've already said it is uncertainties add. So don't think that, you know, if I have a little uncertainty in my di diameter and a little uncertainty in my height, somehow they'll subtract out. You know, I, maybe sometimes I get the diameter measurement a little high. Sometimes I get the height measurement a little low and they'll subtract out. Nope, doesn't work that way. Uncertainties always add together. If you're a little uncertain of the diameter and you have some uncertainty in the height, they just add together. And if you have many different parameters, they'll all just keep adding together until your final result, you know, has a large uncertainty to it. So Keep that in mind, uncertainties always add. All right, let's do a little example here. Determine the density of air at a temperature of 20 plus or minus one degree C and a pressure of 100 plus or minus five kilopascals absolute. Uh, the gas constant for air is given here. So to find that density, we'll use the ideal gas law, which just tells us that the density is uh, the pressure over the gas constant times the temperature. Right, so I want to find ultimately the uncertainty in the density. And uh, I'll write it in terms of the relative uncertainty in the density. I want to find the relative uncertainty in the density. So that'll be the square root of the sums of the relative uncertainty in the density due to the uncertainty in the pressure squared, plus the relative uncertainty in the density due to the gas constant squared, plus the relative uncertainty in the density due to the temperature square that. Okay. Well, one thing I'm going to do right off the bat is this term, the relative uncertainty in the density due to the uncertainty in the gas constant, that one will be negligibly small. It'll be very small because we know that gas constant value very accurately. Right? That's been measured many, many times. Again, typically constants, um, physical constants, are known very uh, accurately, so we don't have to worry about those uncertainties. So we can just neglect that. So I'm gonna just put here, you know, it's approximately zero. It's very, very small. Let's now calculate the relative uncertainty in the density due to the pressure. That'll be one over the density times how the density changes with respect to pressure times the absolute uncertainty in the pressure. So if I substitute in, this will be RT over P. Taking the derivative of the density with respect to pressure, that'll be one over RT. And we have the absolute uncertainty in the pressure. Well, you see the RTs cancel out, and what I'm left with is just delta P over P, which is just the relative uncertainty in the pressure. So that's that one. Let me do the temperature. The relative uncertainty in the density due to the temperature is one over the density times d rho dt times the absolute uncertainty in the temperature. Now we take the derivative of that. That derivative will be minus P over RT squared. And then again, we see there's an R and a T that cancel out. Pressure cancels out and I'm left with minus 
delta T over T or minus the relative uncertainty in the temperature. The minus doesn't make any difference. Um, and the reason for that is because we square the relative uncertainties. It, it all gets squared. You can see that right here, that the relative uncertainty gets squared, so it doesn't matter. So when we substitute these in, the relative uncertainty in the density will be the square root of relative uncertainty in the pressure plus the relative uncertainty in the temperature squared. They both contribute equally. Okay. Well, let's now calculate what those relative uncertainties are. So the relative uncertainty in the pressure is the absolute uncertainty in the pressure divided by the pressure. Well, the, ab the absolute uncertainty in the pressure is the 5 kilopascals, and it's already an absolute pressure. Remember, we need to use absolute temperatures and absolute pressures. So this is already an absolute. So this will be 5 kilopascals over 100 kilopascals. The nominal pressure is just the 100 here. So this will be, what, uh, 1 over 20, or actually, I'll just leave it as 5%. So that's, that's 5%, okay? Relative uncertainty in the temperature will be the uncer absolute uncertainty in the temperature divided by the nominal temperature. Well, the relative, I'm sorry, the absolute uncertainty in the temperature is 1 degree C or 1 Kelvin. Remember, 1 degree C and 1 Kelvin, a, a delta of 1 degree C and uh, is equal to a delta of 1 Kelvin. So this will just be 1 Kelvin. And then the denominator is not 20 degrees C. Remember, we need to do these in terms of absolute quantities. So the denominator would actually be 293 Kelvin. OK, so it's, it's actually a pretty small number here. So this will be 1 over 293. And I, I didn't work out the percentage wise. Um, so I'll just leave it like that. So we could go ahead and plug those numbers back into our expression up here and then solve. And I didn't do that calculation. Uh, I apologize, but I just, you, you get the idea, I hope. And if you look at this for a moment, you'll see actually we know our, we know our temperature more accurately than we know our, our pressure. Um, so it's really most of the uncertainty contributing to our density calculation is really due to the uncertainty in our pressure. It's not because of the uncertainty in the, the temperature. It turns out we actually know the temperature. Even though it says 20 plus or minus 1 degree C, it sounds like a lot of uncertainty. But you have to think about it in terms of Kelvin. It's really 293 Kelvin plus or minus 1 Kelvin okay? because you have to use absolute quantities. All right, so with this example, I just wanted to show you again just another way to propagate, you know, another example of propagating uncertainty. How did the fact that um, constants you can neglect because their uncertainty is very small, and that you have to use absolute quantities when calculating uh, uncertainties associated with pressure and temperatures. Okay, we'll go ahead and end it there.